No, nicotine it absolutely does not cause cancer. That's been categorically proven. What causes cancer is tar. It's the burnt organic substance that's deposited in the respiratory tract when a person inhales cigarette smoke or tobacco smoke. Nicotine is a chemical which is contained in tobacco, in tobacco leaves and released in tobacco smoke, which acts on the brain and has actually a number of pleasant and beneficial effects on the brain. Nicotine itself has been known uh, about for uh, many decades. And nicotine by itself, to the best of my knowledge, has never been proven to cause disease. It does have a st slight stimulant effect, though. And so, of course, if a person should overdose somehow on nicotine by consuming massive doses of it, then one could imagine they could have some of the symptoms associated with overstimulation, like a rapid heart rate or an elevation in their blood pressure. But I have heard some people allege that nicotine can cause heart attacks and strokes. That has never been demonstrated in any kind of evidence-based, peer-reviewed literature. In the medical literature, you won't find anything like that. So nicotine is not what causes disease. Nicotine is what gets people addicted to smoking and using tobacco. If you can separate out the nicotine from the tobacco, then you remove the disease-causing elements in tobacco smoke. That's why nicotine products, many of them, are already approved by the FDA and available without a prescription. There are perhaps four or five different ways that you can purchase and use nicotine. If nicotine caused cancer by itself, I don't think the FDA would have approved it as an over-the-counter drug. Based on the, the research that I've been provided with and the background information that I've received from Smokestick and uh, from scientific literature, there I can't find anything that's released in smoke in the vapor that comes out of Smokestick when it's used that could cause disease. Now, let me qualify that. Many physicians would, just, would talk about addiction as a disease. And I would agree with that. Addiction can be, can be classified as a disease, and I think the disease model of addiction is an excellent way to approach people who are addicted to the use of substances or behaviors that are harming them in some way or, or, or negatively impacting their lives. But nicotine alone, an addiction to nicotine, only causes harm in association with tobacco use. So, uh, j if, if you want to play a semantics game, you can say, yes, the nicotine causes addiction or sustains an addiction that a person may have from smoking cigarettes. It doesn't solve that problem. But then the, the next logical question is, well, what's the problem with being addicted to nicotine if you're not using a tobacco product? And in my opinion, there is no problem. If I have a smoker that tells me that they've completely switched from using tobacco products to using a nicotine-only product, whether it's Nicorette gum or a patch or a nasal spray or a lozenge or a device like an electronic cigarette such as smoke stick, and they can't seem to get themselves to stop using the nicotine substitute, I congratulate them on having made a healthier choice, on having made a lifestyle choice that will significantly reduce their risk of, of uh, heart disease, uh, heart attack, stroke, and there's a long list of cancers and other diseases that are, that are caused by tobacco use. One of the other very toxic chemicals that's released in tobacco smoke that has no appearance at all, is not present in, in, this, in the vapor released from a, a, nicker, a, excuse me, a smoke stick electronic cigarette, is carbon monoxide. I think most people will, will know in the general public that carbon monoxide is something that's bad for you. That's what comes out of car exhaust. That's how people who have died in, in, in accidental, you know, or, or intentional use of a, uh, inhalation of carbon of a car exhaust have died. Carbon monoxide is a dangerous chemical, and cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide. The vapor released by an electronic cigarette, such as smoke stick, does not. It's a very simple vapor. After that extremely long-winded answer, the short-winded answer is: there's nothing that I know of in the vapor released from a smoke stick that has any disease-causing properties. There is a substance which is really just a substrate around which a vapor can form. The same way clouds need dust particles to form the water vapor around the dust particles, in order to form any type of vapor there has to be something around which the, for the water to condense. So the propylene glycol is the inert chemical that passes 
in and out of the human body without being unchanged and with no effect. And it's been studied as far back as 1946. I have a paper on my desk from 1946 that shows that it was studied and had no effect on human beings. The smokestick itself has three simple parts to it. There's the battery, and there's everything else. And the other two parts are right here. Those parts are, let's pull this off. The first one's the first, a, a new device is always hard to pull the first one off. This is actually not an actual, a real cartridge, it's the one just that comes as the cover and packaging in a new, a new smokestick. But this is where you have, this is what they call the cartridge. And what's left here, this part, is what we call an atomizer. So the battery activates a little heating element in here, which is next to the cartridge, heats the cartridge a little bit when the person inhales on the smokestick and produces a little puff of white vapor. Um, it comes with it comes with a charger and a power cord, so you can you can plug the thing in and have one of these batteries charging while you're using the other one. This will satisfy my my desire as a doctor not to endorse uh, anything that I consider uh, to be sort of uh, a um, potential uh, conflict with my image as a health provider. But here's a cartridge which says regular no. What that means is that it's the regular flavor that, uh, that they make, but that it contains no nicotine. So let's take this cartridge with no nicotine, unwrap it, take the little plug out of it that just keeps it moist, keeps it from drying out, and put it on the smokestick. So that's ready to use. So if this battery has been charged a little bit, you ought to be able to just puff on it and create a little bit of a white puff. Let's see if we can do that. And the red light, by the way, will light up. It's the act of inhaling this through this device that, that turns on the battery and the atomizer. There you go. So it produces a little puff. Now, I'm not inhaling it. One would assume uh, or might surmise that a smoker who is deciding to use this as an alternative to smoking would actually inhale the vapor. And it's not, it has a, a, a kind of a sweet taste. Uh, um, and and you can see it dissipates quite rapidly as well, very much like water vapor does. If there is a location where tobacco smoking is banned or illegal, that I don't see any reason how that how use of an electronic cigarette like smokestick would qualify for that uh, restriction. It's not tobacco. And therefore, exposure to the, the vapor that's released when someone either puffs on or exhales the, uh, a smokestick can't harm another individual. It can't create any of the illnesses or problems that are caused by tobacco smoke. Now, I can't tell you whether or not someone might be irritated by it or take offense by it or or consider it, um, in their opinion, to be inconsistent with a smoking ban. But we're going to have to develop a new language for this, because prior to the existence of electronic cigarettes, there was no such thing as non-tobacco smoke. It's unfortunate that in order for people to understand what we're talking about, we have to refer to it as smoke and smokestick, but what we're really saying is that it's an alternative way of smoking, not that it releases smoke, because really what smoke is is the tarry residue and the, the, uh, the multiple chemicals that are released from the burning of an organic material. When you burn anything that is uh, a solid substance, smoke is released. Nothing is being burned in the smokestick. All that's happening is you're heating up a liquid to the point of becoming a vapor. So referring to it as smoke doesn't make sense at all. Therefore, uh, considering it uh, subject to a smoking ban doesn't really make sense either. If you're banning the act of putting something in your mouth and puffing, then I suppose you're banning this. But if what you're banning is the production of smoke, and smoke is the way I just defined it, then there's no reason that this should be subject to that kind of a restriction.